Left-wing students at Arizona State University are calling on the school to kick out Kyle Rittenhouse. Jeans maker Levi Strauss is providing resources for those traumatized by the Rittenhouse verdict. Plus, a teacher who spoke out against critical race theory has been banned from school facilities. All that and more, I'm Bobby Everly. This is the 13 Minute News Hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Kyle Rittenhouse, because if you're like me and you've seen this kid put through the meat grinder by the left-wing media and the Democrats, you just want to see his life calm down, to see it get back to normal. In fact, that's exactly what Rittenhouse is hoping as well. During his interview with Tucker Carlson, Rittenhouse commented on the question of what happens next. The trial is over, at least the criminal one. So what is Rittenhouse looking forward to? Here's his response. I'm hoping I can live a quiet, stress-free life um, and not and be free of any intimidation or or harassment and just go on with my life as a normal 18-year-old kid attending college. So you're going to go to college? I am in college. I'm a student at Arizona State University. What I mean, are you going to go to campus and? I I think I am. I I want to. Um, It's a lot of things we have to look into, so I don't know for sure yet. But I I do intend on going in campus and pursuing a career in nursing. So he's enrolled at Arizona State University, taking online classes with the hopes of being able to attend in person. Carlson then asked Rittenhouse if he thinks that will be possible to live a normal, quiet life. Do you feel like your life's been destroyed by this? I feel my life has been extremely defamed by it. I don't think I would be able to go out and get a job and not have to deal with harassment, but I'm at a place now to where I I have to have um, people with me because people want to kill me just because I defended myself and they're, they're too ignorant to look at the facts of what happened. So that's Kyle Rittenhouse. And now that he just wants to live a normal life to be a normal college student, left-wing student groups at Arizona State University are coming after him, saying the university should ban Rittenhouse from attending classes. Here's the story. The university's Students for Socialism, Students for Justice in Palestine, Multicultural Solidarity Coalition, and Micha de ASU are demanding that school officials withdraw Rittenhouse from the university and release a statement against him and white supremacy. Join us and rally against racist murderer Kyle Rittenhouse being permitted on our campus December 1st at 3.30 outside the Nelson Fine Arts Center on campus. Students for Socialism ASU tweeted Friday. The group, which describes itself as a socialist revolutionary Marxist club with the mission to end capitalism and fight for socialism, shared its demands in the tweet. Wow. What a fine collection. There's the Students for Socialism, Students for Justice in Palestine, I guess they don't have a regard for justice here in America, and a couple of other left-wing groups. It's interesting that Twitter allows the Students for Socialism to call Rittenhouse a racist murderer. Doesn't that violate Twitter's community guidelines? I checked this morning and the tweet is still up on Twitter. You can see it right here, and in that tweet, there are several images attached. One is a list of demands. Another is this picture. Once again, Rittenhouse is called a murderer, which I would think opens up ASU to some kind of major libel lawsuit. The list of demands states that Rittenhouse should be withdrawn from ASU. The group also calls for the university to release a statement condemning Rittenhouse and white supremacy, as well as reaffirming support for safe spaces on campus and defunding the campus police. The socialists also call on ASU to protect them from a violent, bloodthirsty murderer. This is just unreal. Across the country, we see leftists trying to shut down conservatives. Here, we have actual libel, and it's being allowed on Twitter and the ASU campus. I hope Kyle Rittenhouse gets the support he deserves and that ASU administrators step in and actually do their jobs. All right. Next, let's talk about Levi Strauss and their Rittenhouse grief counselor. But first, 
If you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, let's talk about the Levi Strauss company. You know, the one that makes blue jeans. This company, just like so many others, has been infected with wokeness. And now, following the Rittenhouse verdict, they are sponsoring a fireside chat for those who are traumatized over the verdict. The company's chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, Elizabeth Morrison, sent out an email to employees. And here's how it begins. With the news that Kyle Rittenhouse was not convicted in the shooting of three individuals, two of whom lost their lives during racial justice protests last year, this is a difficult day for many. Even just right there, the tone has already been set. The so-called good news, according to the way this email begins, would have been for Rittenhouse to be convicted. The fact that he was found not guilty, or not convicted as this email puts it, leads to a difficult day for many. What about taking the tone that justice was served? What about comparing the Rittenhouse case with the Arbery case? In one, one white kid was acquitted. In the other, three white guys were found guilty. There's none of that. For some reason, the left made the Rittenhouse case their representative case on racial justice, even though only white people were involved. Here's more from the email. To help promote safety, sharing, and to encourage healing, I'll be hosting a fireside chat and Q&A with Dr. Jamila Codrington, a licensed psychologist and racial trauma specialist in early December. Dr. J and I will talk about the mental and physical impacts of back-to-back -back social and racial justice events and trauma coping mechanisms during our discussion. Please always be on the alert when people like this talk about safety, because we've seen this a lot on college campuses too, as a reason for eliminating conservative speakers, that the words actually lead to unsafe conditions. They don't. People might get upset with words, but hearing a differing opinion does not make someone unsafe. The email also points to several resources to help employees impact social justices, equality, and drive positive change. Those resources focus on the issues of gun violence and reaching out to elected officials to lobby for common sense gun laws. So in addition to trauma counseling, Levi Strauss is also providing links so that employees can now be gun control activists. Way to go, Levi Strauss. And what about all the employees who feel justice was served, who felt that the verdict was fair? Do you think any of them are actually allowed to express those feelings in this work environment? Let me know in the comments. All right, next let's talk about Tony Kennett, who is a public school teacher in Indiana who has now been banned from school buildings and his school email. Why did this happen? Was he caught stealing? Was he being inappropriate with a child? Nope, none of the above. He spoke out and admitted what we all know, that yes, concepts of critical race theory are definitely being taught in schools. Here's the story. An Indianapolis public schools administrator who leaked student trainings infused with critical race theory, was banned from school buildings and locked out of his email. I am currently banned from going to any IPS school building or hosting any professional developments, Tony Kinnett posted on Twitter, sharing a screenshot of his work email login. He confirmed that the actions came in response to the Daily Caller News Foundation report describing warnings he had received from human resources over his whistleblowing. This is incredible. As Kenneth noted on Twitter, he was told that he had to work from home because staff have clinical anxiety about working with him. And his crime is simply that he is speaking the truth. Here's Kenneth regarding what's really going on in the classroom. We do have critical race theory in how we teach. We tell our teachers to treat students differently based on color. We tell our students that every problem is a result of white men and that everything Western civilization built is racist. Capitalism as a tool of white supremacy. Those are straight out of Kimberly Crenshaw's main points, verbatim in critical race theory, the writings that formed the movement. This is in math, history, science, English, the arts, and it's not slowing down. Isn't it amazing that those on the left go out of their way to say that critical race theory doesn't exist and it's not being taught when it's obvious that it is. Now, Kenneth is paying the price for exposing what's going on. During an interview earlier this month, 
Kenneth talked about how CRT gets taught even if it doesn't specifically show up in the curriculum. There's this very clever trick that a lot of administrators will pull. In education, there are two things that consist of learning. We have curriculum, which is what the students are learning, and then we have pedagogy, which is how it's taught. So we can officially tell parents, we're not teaching critical race theory. It's not in the Indiana academic standards. But all of a sudden, the classroom door shuts and the teacher starts teaching through a lens of this race essentialism that pits students against each other based on their color. That is just great stuff. And it shows parents need to be more involved. It's not enough to just look at a syllabus or review the curriculum. Parents need to talk to teachers and talk to their children to find out exactly what is going on. During the interview with Jesse Waters, Kenneth pointed to examples of actual assignments that kids have been given across the country that push these ideas that America is racist, that there are only oppressors and the oppressed. And it even extends to teaching math. And they don't do this in math, do they? They can't bring CRT into math, can they? Oh, they sure can. They sure can. Ethnomathematics is a huge thing that's coming to Indianapolis public <laughs> schools. We just had a very large meeting about it. And there's actually a program that's being developed with Indiana University that would analyze how a teacher teaches, analyze the scores of the students, and then determine how racist a teacher is in teaching that math okay. course. Ethnomathematics. Can you believe it? But this is what is going on at America's schools, maybe even in your children's schools. Please find out and get involved. All right, next, as Joe Biden's Build Back Better socialist legislation moves from the House to the Senate, what do the American people think of the plan? Recall that Biden's massive spending bill passed the House by a vote of 220 to 213 with no Republican support. How will the nearly $2 trillion bill do in the Senate? If public opinion is any guide, then not very well. Here's the story. President Joe Biden's $2 trillion Build Back Better spending plan does not enjoy majority support among likely voters who appear concerned the package of cash for everything from climate control to illegal immigrants will worsen the economy. The latest Rasmussen Report survey is bad news for Biden's agenda-setting program as it faces a tough vote in the evenly split Senate after receiving an only Democrat win in the House. Rasmussen's survey of likely voters found them split over BBB, with 51% opposed compared to 42% in support. Of those opposed, a sizable 40% said they were strongly opposed. 51% to 42% is a pretty big gap. In addition, 54% of independents are opposed to Biden's plan. Unfortunately, because of the 50-50 split in the Senate, with VP Kamala Harris able to cast the tie-breaking vote, the passage of this terrible bill is completely in the hands of the Democrats. That's why continued opposition by Democrat senators like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema is so crucial. Here's more. Standing in the way of a Democrat-only victory in the Senate has been West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, who is negotiating a lower price. Also, Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema has been pushing for lower taxes. Rasmussen took note of the funding of illegal immigrants in BBB, which is opposed by West Virginia voters. West Virginia voters overwhelmingly oppose an amnesty provision for illegal immigrants in the Build Back Better legislation, bolstering Democrat Senator Joe Manchin's opposition to the measure, said the analysis. One of the prime reasons for opposition to the bill, as noted in the survey, is that respondents feel it'll be bad for the economy. They are certainly right about that. In addition, the bill is pushing policies that the federal government should not be doing, from the amnesty provisions to IRS spying to socialist Green New Deal plans that hurt American security and energy independence. This bill should be voted down without question. However, it's up to the Democrats. And even with Manchin and Cinema providing something of a check against the radical left, some kind of bill will likely be passed. And that is bad news for America. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our next show is going to be Wednesday evening at the usual time, 6.30 p.m. Central. 
Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13 minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here and I'll see you next time.